tonight on The War. I look at that gun and I see uh, something that's more than a weapon. It's something that saved my life, my buddy's lives. Sure. That was good. <laughs> I gotta be honest, I almost loathe the term responsible gun owner. In its purest form, it is the standard every gun owner should strive to be. Unfortunately, the term responsible gun owner has been hijacked by anti-gunner verbal alchemists as they try to suck all of the joy out of the gun. In their minds, a responsible gun owner means you keep your gun unloaded with no rounds in the magazine, locked in a bank vault, on an island. And if you so happen to shoot your gun, in their minds, it must be done with no emotion, no feeling or enjoyment. It's merely a task and that's it. With that line of reasoning, I should never just go for a drive and only ride my bike when my car doesn't work. And we should burn all jet skis because they have no other purpose than to make us happy. Because in the words of Daniel Tosh. You ever seen a sad person on a wave runner? <laughs> have you? Seriously, have you? But I can't deny that shooting can be an emotional event, something that you do sometimes simply because of the way it makes you feel. Owning your gun responsibly is paramount, and learning to use it safely and proficiently is next to godliness. But responsible gun ownership, proficiency, and feeling don't have to be mutually exclusive. You know what? If you have told me four years ago, said this exact same thing to me, mm -hmm. I probably would have thought you were crazy. Why? Because I didn't think about guns in that term. Uh, to me, guns were a tool that were merely used for specific purposes. Okay. Uh, you know, my, my, my dad would use them to put food on our table. It, it stands to reason. It's just kind of people who make the argument for the Second Amendment and say, you know what? It, it only applies to militias and hunters. And I'm like, no, not really. No. Well, I'm I'm glad that I've got friends like you that introduced me to a whole nother world of shooting because mm. why would it be any different than anything else that I do? I have emotional experiences when I go running, you know, and the emotion for me is I love being outside. I'm an outdoors girl, so I love doing anything that involves being in nature. Jet skiing, water skiing, you know, whatever it is. Shooting is no different. When I talk about things being a feeling, an emotion, they, stand, they sound real lofty and kind of extravagant <laughs> and abstract. That's all you do. That's yeah. what you talk about everything. It does, and that's just because I have, I naturally have a passionate personality. Yeah. But it doesn't necessarily mean that anytime you go to the range, you like, you have doves and pigeons flying off in the background <laughs> every time you shoot around. Yeah. It's it's the simple things. It's like when you go running, you're like you're enjoying that. That's yeah. something that's a feeling. I'm only accentuating the aspect of it. Stuff that is so transient, you don't even notice it, but you do it on a subconscious level mm -hmm. because you enjoy it. It's something that you feel. God rest her soul. My Angelo said it best. Um, I'm probably gonna butcher this, but <laughs> she said the one thing she learned was people forget the things that you've written. Things people forget the things that you have said but they never forget the way you make, make them feel. feel. Yep. Well, I just like that we're gonna bring up and show so many different aspects of shooting than just the negative things that you're gonna hear a lot of times from media. And, and, and we'll address those too. Yep. And I will attack those head on. Um, it's just, I, I, I try to be as objective as possible. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes my passions make me a little bit more subjective, <laughs> but I think it's definitely something that as we continue forward mm -hmm. and we shine more of a light on it, my, my goal isn't really just to convert people into yeah. becoming guns. It's to provide an objective platform where people can look at it and see it above and beyond just self-defense, yeah. uh, beyond just a tool, a tool that you have here mm -hmm. to hunt with, and to see it in different lights so that you can make your own holistic decision about yeah. how you feel about a firearm instead of looking at it from this very kind of dark, shallow place. Cool. Let's get into it. Let's do it.
So, Amy. Yes. You know what I noticed about you? What? You get really excited prior to going to the range. Oh, I do. You do? I get incredible. Like, that. I have this whole, like you were talking about storylines and narratives with music. Like, I do that leading up to getting to the range. Mm -hmm. And I think it's funny, the song that you chose. Love the song. Love the group, Blue Sky, Black Death. Mm -hmm would not have been the choice of music that I picked to get ready to go to the range though. <laughs> you know, for me, the whole entire excitement comes from anticipating getting there and mm. being outside and usually I'm with friends and I'm looking forward to a good time. And I probably would have picked something that's a little bit more upbeat, uh, you know? See, that's the funny thing about that. Like, um, if you watch some of my gun review videos on YouTube, I tend to lean towards more somber Oh, you music. totally do. I do. Yeah. It's, and, and, and the reason is I love, I love the contrast. I, mm -hmm. I love the, the, the kind of power force hitting effect of the firearm in contrast to the kind of more somber, melodic kind of tones. And of course, I, you, you put just, that much thought into it. I yes. do, I do. I don't know <laughs> like what's wrong with everything. Me, but yeah. I do. Um, but in a lot of ways, it's kind of like, you know, there's some people who are just like, listen to music when you go to the range. Like, a vast majority of the videos that I put together that I did on my own, I was listening to music when I did it. And the reason is, is because, like, I, I, I poke fun a lot of times at the, the tactical community. Yeah. But I, I'm all into that. Like, I am so into that. Yeah. It's unbelievable. But I'm also, like my mom always says, there's a time and a place for everything. Yeah. Sometimes I just want to go out to the range and just shoot. Yeah, it helps and, you escape and yeah. helps you decompress. With the, I don't, sure. don't want to think about, I don't want to think about form. I don't want to think about doing drills. Yeah. I don't want to do any of that. I just want to go out and be in the element and just shoot. Well, we were talking about how shooting is no different than any other activities that we do. Yeah. So the people that think that's crazy, like, why would you listen to music out on the range? Again, shooting is no different. Yeah. So whether you like melodic music or whether you want something that's going to pump you up, you know, it's that is not a weird concept. <laughs> so it Well, to some people it is. To and some that, people, it's it's something that's a well, bit that's weird boring. to me. I, I mean, and, and I get it in a lot of ways. If you're only focused on guns through a certain focal lens, and it's anything outside of that, is, yeah. it's kind of like, what? Wait, no, they're guns. Mm -hmm. Then yeah, you know, then it, it may be kind of foreign to you this to hear that. I like to just wake up sometimes, and when I have the time, just go to the range with music and shoot for, for no reason. Like yeah. I'm not I'm not trying to get the smallest groups. I'm not trying to see how accurate I can be or how fast I can shoot. I just want to shoot. But there I, actually I could feel... be music you could listen to that would help you improve those things. Probably you know? so. Probably. Well, I am excited to see you uh, and go hang out with Mr. Lasort again because he took us to do some fun stuff. Yes, he did. So let's check that out. Okay, guys, Coleone, Amy, and I are at the range, and we created a course of fire here just in the last 10 or 15 minutes. It's going to be pretty cool. I'm going to explain it to you right now. Amy's going to start from the top of the berm. We have steel at 100 yards. She's going to take five shots kneeling on the steel. She has to get five hits. If she misses a couple times, she has to make up those shots. We're going to be on the timer, so we're going to get a full time for the whole course of fire. I'm going to be prone right here taking shots. I have to get my five hits. As soon as she stops firing with her fifth shot, fifth hit, I start firing. Coleone's going to be over here in the trees using one of these branches as a rest. And he's going to be shooting from this position, and he has to get his five hits. Once he gets his fifth hit, we, he yells move. We all move. He's going to run around to Amy's position kneeling on the berm, and I'm going to move to the tree, and we're going to continue to move right until everyone is shot from all three positions. Once that's been done, we're all gonna converge on these barrels, so we're gonna be muzzle up, safety's on of course, everything's gonna be safe. Um, guns are gonna be ready to fire. I'm gonna shoot from the left-hand side, Amy's gonna shoot from the middle, and Coleone's gonna shoot kneeling from the right. So here I'm gonna be shooting left-handed, just so that I'm behind cover, Amy's gonna be here, and Coleone will be to the right. We each get our five hits. Once we got our five hits, timer stops, and that's our time. So that's the course of fire. Coleone and Amy, you guys ready for this? Uh, so ready. All right. Yes. It's going to be fun. This is going to be awesome. This is the I first time, wait. Amy, that you've shot like this. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. first and, time. And so we're just going to be safe and have fun. That's what it's cool. all about. And Alex is going to be here yelling hits <laughs> because when you're shooting on steel from 100 yards and 85 yards where we're at here, um, sometimes you can't hear hits. So Alex is going to be looking through binoculars, yelling hit, 
If he doesn't say hit, Amy. Oh, I gotta go again? You have to shoot again. Colin, you know, probably have a couple of those too. Did, did you say I was gonna <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, it's a beautiful night. We're gonna have some fun right Woo! now. Amy, you're gonna start it off. Right. When you hear the timer, go beep. Let's All get right, it on, guys. Let's make some good hits. Here we go. Hit! 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 Next! Hit! Tap rack, baby! Tap rack! Seats, the, the mag's not seated. Woohoo! Let's get it done. Hit! 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 Nice. That was nice. fast! That was fast. Woo! All right, Coleon, get it done from the hill. Hit! 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 Scratch that. Hit! 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 Yeah, hit. Amy! Next! Woo hit! 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 Move! Move! Let's move it! Move it, move it! Nice shooting, Amy. Go, Amy, good shots. All right. Hit! 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 Yeah, Amy! Hit. All right, move. let's move up. Barrels, guys, go, barrels. Go, Amy, go. you're shooting. Go, let's go. 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 you're shooting right. I'll shoot go, left. Go, go. you start us out. Five good hits, buddy, five good hits. Me? Yep, yep. you. Huh? Go ahead and play. You. Nice hits, Amy. Nice. Hit! 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 Uh, Hit! Five? Yup, that's five. Let's All do right. it. Hit! Hit! Nice. Hit! 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 Woo! Five. Woo! Damn! <sighs> we had some hiccups there, but that was good. <laughs> That was good. You fought through it. How fast were you shooting when you got that magazine thing? I was so mad. Go, I was go, like, go, 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 go. I was like, you've I mean, got to be kidding me. Those were the fastest four hits that we had. I mean, that was like machine gun stats. You were very, that was very accurate for being that I fast. I focus too. when I'm angry. Right. How fun was that? How fun was that? Oh my that was gosh. I mean, that's the first time you're doing this. I mean, yeah. you are doing exceptionally well. Thank you. Like, better than anybody I could that ever imagine doing it for the first time. I was surprised. I was like, I was like, I know this gun is not my functioning. I was like, I was like, <laughs> and, second, I was like oh, well, I didn't seat the mag. You, uh, you didn't seat the mag, tap, rack, and get it going. So you learned that from this, but dude, you fixed it and you shot super fast. Let's go back to the barn and talk Do about it. this a little bit more decompressed, beautiful <laughs> night. Cool, nice. Thanks. Kind of want to expend the rest of this magazine. <sighs> So the sort, I had a blast. And I've done these things before, but there was something about the teamwork, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and, and kind of working in tandem. Right. And, and, and kind of, it was competitive, but it wasn't like cutthroat, but it was, <laughs> it, it was enough to really kind of get your heart racing right. and really get involved in it and really like, yeah. look, I can't let my teammates down. That's right. Yeah. You um, felt the pressure. Yeah. You do not want to have misses because no. you're slowing it down for everybody else who just had hit. <laughs> Which is Amy, Especially which is Amy, here, yeah, yeah, was killing it. Like, yeah. when I tell you killing it, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm like, she's been trolling us the entire time. Right. You know, I was secretly practicing this whole time. Hey, right? I would believe it. After she got done with her first stage, it was my turn to shoot. I think I had the, the old double take, like, that was Amy. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, like, but think about it, though. 
when I really sat down and I watched her, especially when I was watching her uh, at the barrels, yeah. especially considering I had nothing else to do except get the concussion for right. every shot. And she was getting that same concussion and she was still <laughs> shooting so well. Yes. That causes flinch. That should cause flinch, and it wasn't. It, exactly. And I looked and I was like, no, she's just athletic. She's staying solid. She's just athletic. That's right. Yes. And well, so. It's good because it shows that, I mean, even if you just have the desire to do this, right. it, it's something that is an absolute blast. I literally can't stop smiling about it. Because and you're gonna I tell your so friends much. about it. Tell my friends about it. I want to take my friends. I mean, I might have to be the Lasort to my friends because, <laughs> like, I never knew that this kind of shooting was out there. And it's so easy. Yeah. It's so easy. All you have to do is find the place to right. shoot, safe and legal, and then have your imagination. We set that course up in about 10 or 15 minutes, and we had the Daniel Defense ARs, about the best guns you can be shooting. But you don't have to have those. You can literally use a 22 bolt gun and run those courses and have fun. You don't necessarily have to have steel. If you do, it's more fun. Oh, so so more try fun. to get a piece yeah. of steel if you can. But it's just not that difficult. And people need to realize that this is how you can really make people oh, sure. love shooting. And that's mm -hmm. the thing, too. It's, it's the fact that I, I like to call it aspirational recreation. Right. Because I can go out on a basketball court. And, and get a couple of friends and go out and start playing pickup games of basketball. I'm not necessarily trying to be the LeBron James of the world. I may imitate them in certain right. respects, but I think what happens is we get the shooting world gets lumped, shoot, just shooting in general gets lumped into this, this military tactical operational yeah, thing, sure. which is not a bad thing, but it's, it, it seems almost inaccessible. Right. Like, uh -huh. like, like, I'm not a Marine. You can't do that. I'm not yeah, yeah, I can't go out and just shoot. I'm, and then people feel intimidated. Yeah. They don't want to come out and mm -hmm. just shoot. What we did was take certain aspects of tactical stuff. We take some stuff from the military aspect of things, and we've incorporated it into something, infused it, and made it something that was fun and right. recreational. I, I caught myself doing that a couple times when I was, um, when I was aiming, I would... I was getting in my head a little bit, like, oh, I, I have to hit this, right, right. you know? And then when I was like, you know what? No, just have fun. Like, just <laughs> line up the red dot and just have fun. But you still feel the pressure because you're on the I time do, and we we're team, watching you, yeah, right? exactly. And so, you know, being able to shoot in that situation also makes you such a better shooter when you're shooting under more normal circumstances. So, I mean, it just builds your skills, builds your experience mm -hmm. level. If you make a mistake, you know how to fix it next time. So, you know, our time was 193 seconds. Mm -hmm. So that's what we shot. You know, that was a lot of shooting, lots of moving. We moved. Is that know, a forward. good time? I think it's a great time, okay. especially you, you, you shot so damn well. Time. We might have slowed you down. That's what I'm thinking. We yeah. might have slowed you down. I had a couple but, of But, all right, maybe not. We, we aren't going to go that far. But 193 seconds. So what's cool is three or four months from now, after you shoot a lot more, this style of shooting, we're going to run it again and see what our time is. I guarantee cool. it's going to be significantly faster. Yes, but before we go, we want to give a huge shout out to ETTS. We're just about, you know, 30 miles south of Dallas, yep. and we had a great time. This is an absolutely beautiful range. So thank you guys very much, and thank you, Lasort, for... Glad to do it. I had a blast. I, I did. can't wait to see what you have up your sleeves next time. I'm looking forward to it. Yes, sir. Adventure breeds character, and the path should be less traveled. Independence breeds survival, and you must depend on who you know you are. Your inspiration drives you to never waste a moment. As a pioneer, an advocate, a gun owner, it's time to celebrate your lifestyle every single day. So the team at NRA Freestyle has now launched NRA Sharp Daily. Yes, so this is so awesome. For those of you that aren't really sure what we're talking about, uh, there's a lot of buzz going on about Sharp. It is a daily firearm culture Fashion. I call it a super blog. It, it is totally a super blog. Now, that's exactly what it is. Tell us a little bit more about it. Um, NRA Sharp Daily is essentially the, the lifestyle cultural component of firearms ownership. Being a modern day shooter. In modern day America, <laughs> yeah. basically. It, it, it's definitely an aspirational blog site. It's, it's one of those places that you go to really kind of almost, I don't want to say improve your life, but to add components to it that you may not have been really privy mm -hmm. to before or even thought about. 
in terms of how you incorporate a firearm into your life, how you engage and involve yourself in other activities, yeah. and just other interests that you may have above and beyond the firearm, which may serve as just a catalyst. For There's you. literally something for everybody Absolutely. on this website. Absolutely. And one of the awesome things about it is the fact that you feel like it's not too male. Not manish. at all. Like it, it, I didn't realize how how effortlessly it actually yeah. transcended the gender line in terms of you know. Now, the there were some cool things. Like I'm probably not going to buy that Ducati. That was, you know, <laughs> but I liked looking at you know, it. And I funny? thought it was cool. I thought about buying a bike. It okay. Not, that, not, not like I have a road bike, but I yeah. wanted to buy like a bike bike. But my friends keep talking me out of I it. I definitely won't be. What is it called? The the Lux, the Luxus, the Luxus, the Lux. But see, that's the thing about the Luxus. And for those who you don't understand, at, at the end of each article, generally. There's these certain character types, and we make suggestions in terms of different products in relation to the mm -hmm. article. And then you have the Luxus, the Pragmatist, and the and the, <laughs> and the investor. I'm probably and, the pragmatist well, see, on, on all of it. But that's I a beautiful it. thing. It helped it's, me dream and it helped me create. And I was like, oh wow, this is open. I didn't even know that this was out there. But see, that's just the thing though. It isn't the luck, like it's like, I'm not gonna read the blog and always go to the Luxus because I'm always the Luxus. Yeah. On certain aspects of things, you may be the Luxus or you may be the pragmatist or you may be the investor. Yeah. It, it varies from different interests pretty well, much. Well, there's think definitely something for everybody. So if you guys have not had a chance to check it out, again, www.nrasharp.com. As a SEAL for 12 years, I learned quick that testing and evaluation are critical. I want to have the zip ties knuckle to knuckle. You have no idea what works and what doesn't until the bullets actually start flying. And now that I'm out, I get tons of people asking me all the time about their favorite TV shows and movies. What's realistic and what isn't? Well, there's only one way to find out. It's time to put Hollywood to the test. I'm Dom Rosso, and this is Media Lab. So joining us here on this segment is Mr. Dom Rosso, NRA News commentator and host of Media Lab. What's up, buddy? Glad you're What's here. What's up, Amy? Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. I mean, this is like home. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how does it feel to be working on Media Lab? Well, nobody's doing movie reviews. So jumping into that and then being able to beat the crap out of each other and <laughs> toss things around and, you know. You have like the coolest job ever. It pretty much Wait, 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 really? I mean, one of, really? one of. So hold on. One of the coolest jobs You did just admit ever. that it is your, one of your coolest shows now. So, yes. I mean, I'm just saying. Second only. I'm just saying. He gets, like, war. he gets like, act like he's beating people up all day. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, you looking forward to hearing what I have on my mind today? Absolutely, of course. But so why course. wouldn't I want to listen to what you have to say? <laughs> yeah, you know, is there something interesting to ask? Or So, some people wonder why I get off on owning guns that are used by soldiers in war. I have no shame in saying that I want a real HK416 rifle simply because one of my friends who's a SEAL used it when he was deployed. It's not due to some sick, demented pleasure I derived from the thought of killing someone. Instead, it's the idea that I own a rifle that was used by someone who sits at the top of his craft. That's why I loved my 2007 M6, because the engine in that car was inspired by Formula One racing. I don't want to be a race car driver any more than I want to be a soldier, but I respect and admire both because they've achieved a level of expertise in their field that I can only aspire to. So it's cool knowing that I have a little piece of their greatness, whether it be the engine in my car or an HK416. Because let me be honest, the most I'll ever do with these things are shoot some steel or embarrass the guy in the Mustang with the hot girl in the passenger seat who's now mouthing off her phone number to me. Dom? Or in the best case scenario, you actually get to use it for, you know, what I got to use it for for a long time. But that gun has a lot of roots. You mm -hmm. know, like the HK416 was painstakingly R&D'd and tested and evaluated to get to where it's at now. So it's just, I look at that gun and I see uh, something that's more than a weapon. It's something that's saved my life, my buddy's lives. Like, we've gone on on multiple targets to take that thing and, and do some pretty good things with it, you know? That's the cool factor for me. I'll never get even close to 50% of the capabilities of that damn gun. I won't. But the fact that I know what it can do based on what you just told me and the, the amount of work and R&D that's gone into it, that to me is the cool factor. Sure, it'll probably sit in my safe and get shot when I go to the range or something like that. Or, you know, if space monkeys take over, I might, you know, of course. get to put it to some work. Inevitably. But other than that. <laughs> See, you guys know I'm here, right? So I always talk about mindset. 50%, mm -hmm. no, nope, throw that out. You can reach 100% of the capability of that gun. I know you could, so. So, okay, when you tell him he could reach full full capacity, full right. whatever, what do you mean? Well, he's, he's driving the gun, right? The, the capabilities of the gun are, are very precision-oriented. So just 
knowing that you could take that thing to its max and, and reach the capabilities, whether it's the minute of angle, the range, the distance, the, the pattern, all that stuff is, uh, you know, you could definitely get there. That's all training. So, cool. yeah. Yeah, do you have anything that you, like, own where you know you just, you're kind of just, you know this person had it, and so for you, it's something special. I've got a 1911 that's 100 years old. So mm -hmm. that was literally the first 1911 frame that I bought. So that is history, right? That's was, pretty cool. Yeah, it was, yeah. it was used in the World Wars, and it was just kind of one of those things. Was like I gotta have that. You know, exactly. now it's just it's it's rustic, it's old, and uh, does it work? It does work. Oh, it does work. Yes, and, <laughs> that's uh, cool. <laughs> it was cool. I actually got it one. So 1911, <laughs> girl. Yeah. Come no, on. Seriously, come on. <laughs> Well, you say historic, so I'm sitting here thinking, well, I mean, do you keep it in a case somewhere? Do you? Yes, there's yeah. big plans for that thing. I actually got a fun ah. fundraiser for one of my buddies that was killed, oh, okay. so it's just kind of okay, like, yeah. has a lot of That's meaning, cool. so it's pretty badass. Yeah, yeah see, and, and it's that exactly what I'm talking about there. It's even when, let's take it all the way back to when I was in high school, like, and I wanted a pair of Air Jordans. I, I, I may not have been Jordan. I may have been a little close. But when you put them on, you, you felt more Air Jordan-ish? To a certain extent, yeah. you know, it was aspirational. You know, it was sure. kind of like, of course, I want to be the best basketball player I could possibly be. But being able to have those shoes on to turn on the TV and see him wearing the same shoes, that did something for me. Yeah, sure. there's a connection. Yeah, yeah. Sure. there's a connection there. That's with Absolutely. All, that's with all the pieces. You know, when, it, when you buy a firearm, when you buy a car, there's a connection with what it, it brings to you. You know, like you were saying, it just has some some type of meaning that yep. connects that in your head. So Yeah, I mean, I have a friend with them. Like same same thing with the 1911 deal. Like it was used in World War II, and I'm like, oh, that is so sick because there's a history behind mm -hmm. it. There's something about it that I get to touch. I may not be able to go back in time and experience that history, right. but I get to touch a little piece of it. You know, the Colosseum in Italy. I mean, exactly. Yep. That was like I stood there and I was like, people have fought to the death here, you know, and tried to save Absolutely. their own lives. I mean, that was real. Like that was the connection. That was pretty cool. Yeah. I oh, really appreciate you joining us here, man. You know it's open season here for you. Anytime you want to come on the show. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I would go on your show, but I'm not really one for getting beat up by you. Well, well I want to come on your show. Yeah, you both have to. Because you're no, a glutton for lives. pain. No, because I found a fight scene that I like wanted to recreate. So I was like, oh, man, if Dom can like, Why are you holding out? this, then I... Why are you holding out? Well, okay, so we'll, we'll work on this later on, yeah. Yep. No, but we really did love having you on the show. So awesome. don't Thanks, be a stranger. Guys. Come back no, anytime. Anytime. I appreciate it. You yeah. guys are crushing it. Thanks. Absolutely. Cool. I gotta admit, there's something about a shotgun that just makes you feel like you're ready for the world. Like you can do anything, like charge up a hill like a boss, until you realize you've charged up the easier side of the hill. If I had to choose a couple of words to describe the JM Pro Series shotgun from Mossberg, it would be capable versatility. The JM Pro is like the annoyingly talented friend you have who happens to be good at everything. However, instead of making you feel jealous, their abilities inspire you. The JM Pro is a shotgun for people who think they're too good for a pump action, but not quite uppity enough to buy vanilla. Nothing about this gun screams, I'm super special, look at me. Unless you know what you're looking at, of course. Much like BMW M cars, subtle in their appearance, but a frighteningly capable monster lives under the hood. Shooting the JM Pro once won't make you fall madly in love. Hell, shooting it twice will leave you no more than simply satisfied. You have to shoot the hell out of this thing. And we're not talking endurance test shooting, but one good day at the range before you realize that it's been an hour since you got back from the range and you can't stop thinking about how awesome the shotgun is. The versatility of this gun is borderline sexy. From running drills to shooting sporting plays, which I admittedly miss more times than I care to share. This shotgun effortlessly fits whatever role you need it to play. Hell, with a 10 round capacity, it carries more rounds than most 45 caliber handguns. All the while launching projectiles the size of double D batteries. Ask your anti-gun buddy if his alarm system can do that. The safety is bird brain proof. The stock feels almost custom, well at least to me. The trigger has a clean and predictable break and loading shells was actually a pleasure instead of an exercise in risk management for your thumbs. I would love this in a pistol grip, but that's not exactly a negative thing. This gun was simply a joy to shoot. I'll be the first to admit, I love Benelli's, but this is a no-brainer through and through. I will own this gun, or Mossberg just won't get this one back. All I can say is, 
If you're on the market for a high capacity semi-auto shotgun that won't drain your kid's college fund, you might want to start here. Okay, so this has been so fun. Um, have you noticed how many more people are tagging us and they're how yes. I watch noir? Yeah, it kind of exploded. It, like out of nowhere. Yeah. I mean, it's like our all of you watching just kind of jumped on this really fun bandwagon. And it feels like a big family as I, we all I, watch I, the I show. love them. Every time I get tagged, I'm like, oh, another one. Oh, another one. Well, another we should one. start a hashtag. Started taking it. screenshots on my phone. Is that they watching this? Yes. No, we should definitely from from now on. If you are going to take a picture of how you watch noir, how about you use the hashtag? How I watch, how I watch noir. noir. I think that's a great idea. Yes, and we pick- might even show some of your pictures on the show. We will show your pictures on the show. She's a little bit more picky. <laughs> Just so that you know, she would probably like it if the photos were a bit higher resolution. Well, it would Just look nicer. Just a little nicer. bit fancier. She's just picky like that. There you, there you go. Well, yes, if you want to send in your high-res photos, we will try to put them on the show. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get right to Ask Noir. Right. Uh, the first one, someone has been asking, what is the first gun you ever shot? The first gun I ever shot was a Taurus. It was a handgun, and it was chambered in 40. What was it? Just what, a tour, like what? It was. I, I forgot the the actual model number. All I remember it's a Taurus. I actually had the gun. My friend actually gave me the gun. Oh, after the- <laughs> sake. <laughs> but no, I, it, you know what? I it, it it really meant a lot to me. Sure. I, it really, really, really meant a lot to me because I do consider him one of my best friends. Because you got over your fear of shooting, and therefore he had to and yeah. give you the gun. Yep, absolutely. That's cool. I, I have a Taurus too, actually. Oh. Uh, the second question a lot of people have been wondering: Who is that hot girl in the DDM4 video? <laughs> Well, she's she she is a model. Yeah, she's definitely a model, but she's actually really pro gun. She's cool. really into her guns, and she, she did like it. she did a damn good job. Yeah, uh, I was really thoroughly impressed with how she made the M4A1. Well, console. she's not only in the video, but she's also on like she's Trump on Daily, she's too, on a she's lot all of over stuff. the place. Yeah, she, with, she yeah. photographs very well. Yeah, she definitely does. Know, she's very talented. Well, cool. What do you have for us on the Spotify playlist this week? Ah, you so this triple, week... No triple banks, huh? No, we're not triple banks. Okay, good. We're not triple banks. Good. Uh, so this week, um, any of you who really know me know that my one of my favorite groups is Blue Sky, Black Death. We probably mentioned them like eight times on the show here today. Yep. And to the song I added was the very first song I ever heard from this group called Lord of Our Vice. Ooh. And so here is Blue Sky, Black Death with Lord of Our Vice. Cool. So, oh, and I want to give a shout out to my best friend, Osa for actually giving me the first gun I ever shot. Oh, that's nice of you. (laughs) Very cool. We'll see you guys next week. Absolutely.